Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. It's that time of the week where we get to take a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, before I get into what's on the table in front of me right now, we're actually gonna go back in time just a few weeks. Uh, you may remember there were a few weeks ago, I actually had to blur some knives out of our presentation. That's because we thought we had authorization to share some stuff with you. Um, but after we had filmed, we got word from the manufacturer, we had to hold just a little bit. And those were the new SIG K320 knives from Hogue. Uh, so rather than me uh, redoing my, my spiel on them right now, we're gonna do a quick rewind and you can check out uh, that presentation. So the mystery is over, check these out. Uh, we actually debuted or had the chance to debut in our Blade Show Week coverage with Hogue, and that's the new SIG K320 line of knives. Now, when we shot that video, we didn't actually have the samples in front of us, but Hogue were real, uh, real kind enough to actually send us a few pieces to take a look at. And so I'm really happy to get my hands on these and actually get a real firsthand impression because I really liked what I saw in those videos. And that's only been increased now that I've actually seen the knives in person. We've actually got two versions of this knife um, or two, uh, two main versions with a bunch of different configurations. I think there's gonna be about 10. Uh, but we've got an automatic lock version, push button uh, with a side open action, as well as an able lock version. The able lock, of course, is their competitor to the axis lock, and it is a crossbar locking system. You've got that nice ambidextrous crossbar running through both sides of the handle, so lefties or righties can use it just as well or just as easily. And the other thing that's really nice that um, I actually can't think of any other example I've seen uh, of a crossbar locking knife that has a four position pocket clip. Uh, most of them, the way they're built, if you were to put the pocket clip, clip up near the top, it would actually get in the way of the lock. But they've positioned it in such a way here where you can get tip up or tip down on either side very nicely. And that pocket clip itself is very nice too. It's nice and deep carry. Uh, and it should be in any of the four positions. I actually haven't moved it around. But judging by the positions of the holes on any position you put it in, it is going to be nice and deep carry. They've also got a few ridges essentially pushed into the front of the clip as well. And that's gonna give you some extra, uh, extra grip on your finger when you go to pull the knife out of the pocket, make it very easy to access in no time at all. But actually, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself on the, uh, the fine details. Let me pull back just a second. Uh, the K320 series as a whole was designed to match the P320 pistols from Sig Sauer. So you've got similar, or uh, actually uh, identical colors and finishes on these knives as you do on the pistol, because of course Hogue is working on those pistols, uh, the grips as well, in addition to making these licensed knives for them. This one's the Coyote finish, and that's on the handle and the blade, and that blade itself is S30V stainless steel with uh, just under three and a half inches of length to it, and in my opinion, an absolutely phenomenal blade shape for just pretty much any use out there. Obviously, these are tactically inspired knives, but this is gonna be a great blade shape for outdoor, everyday carry, uh, even hunting and food prep if you wanted to get into that sort of thing. Now there is gonna be a plain edge version. This version, of course, you can see has a, uh, a partially serrated combo edge here at the back. Uh, that plain edge version is gonna be all blacked out, uh, black blade, which I believe is a PVD coated finish and the black handle. And they're gonna start at a really good price, uh, just about 127.50 or just under that made in the USA, which is pretty great in my opinion. Now that puts it just a few bucks more than a, uh, a similarly coated blade version of the Benchmade Griptilian, which I see this is a pretty natural competitor to. Uh, at this point, you're not gonna be able to get a, uh, an uncoated or a stonewashed or satin blade like you can with the Griptilian, and those will be a little bit cheaper, but these are pretty competitively priced. And in my opinion, I mean, Benchmade's got a great axis lock, but the Able lock is currently my personal favorite of the crossbar locks on the market today. There's just sort of a precision and an almost luxury feel to Hogue's execution of this lock uh, that's even better than what everyone else is doing. Again, not to put those down, I just really love Hogue's version. In addition to that able crossbar lock, you also have that push button automatic, as I mentioned. Here is the Tonto blade shape, which again is gonna come uh, in a few different colors as well as with or without that combo edge. Let me fold that up. You do have that secondary safety there. There's no red indicator. You just have to get used to it. Pull the safety back, push the button, the action's really good. And then unlike some of their, uh, their button lock flippers, you can actually use that, uh, that secondary safety both in the open and closed position. In some of those button locks, it only works in the, uh, in the open position, I believe. 
There's a good amount of handle length to these. I've got all four of my fingers on the main section of the grip. And of course, as you folks know, do have slightly larger than average hands, but we've also got that finger choil here, which you're not gonna get on something like the Griptilian. And that's part of the reason you see this little hump here at the back of the edge. They didn't wanna sharpen that edge all the way through so that when you choke up, you're not gonna be uh, kind of getting bit by the sharp edge itself. Just a little extra degree of safety there, which is nice. And those auto versions, there's not even that much of a premium over the manual versions too. Those are starting at under 145. All right, first one up this week, we've got a special edition cold steel. This is their gun sight folder, uh, which has been upgraded. Uh, got a few different things going on. This comes in at just over 110 right now. Blade on this is a, uh, a dagger style profile, as you can see, uh, but no uh, sharpened top edge. It's a single edge only with a, uh, well, technically multiple edges because it's combo edge. You've got uh, all the serrations down there. Uh, but the blade itself, uh, about 3.8 inches, OS 10. So a, a definite bump up over stuff like OS 8. Should put it somewhere uh, similar to 154 CM, VG 10, stuff like that. Just a good premium non-powder metallurgy stainless. They've spiced it up a little bit. We've got some file work here on the spine. Probably not actual files did the work. It's probably machine done, but it looks really cool. And of course you got the dual thumb stud there as well. The handle on these are pretty comfortable, I gotta say. Uh, that's partly due to the fatness and the fact that they've rounded them over quite nicely. Uh, the only potential hot spot, so to speak, would be the uh, finger holes here, or eh, I guess I shouldn't call them finger holes, uh, even though my fingers do kind of rest there. But they're more for traction, uh, and this is especially gonna be true if you're wearing like a combat glove or something like that. It's gonna give you a little bit of extra grip, even beyond like the orange peel texture that, that's on these green handles here. Now the handles here are Grivex and they do keep the weight down a little bit. Um, not a featherweight, this is uh, about 4.8 ounces, so just under five. But given the size of the knife, that's not that bad. It really does feel, uh, or it's a little bit lighter than you might expect when you pick it up. So it's gonna be pretty easy to carry, but despite that lightweight, you still got a nice strong lock here because you do have, uh, well, you do have the triad lock, of course, and that's backed up by dual liners uh, that are skeletonized and inset. Uh, but they are full length other than that. So you've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of durability built into that right here. So you really can press this knife to some harder uses. All right, next up, we're gonna go a bit more premium EDC with a new knife from Riot. This is the Coyote. Comes in about 350 right now. This is an Emmanuel Lebrun design and it's really nice. Some really good lines going on here. And of course, being a Riot, they're put together pretty impeccably. Blade, really cool shape. You got these this nice upswept clip point with a bit of recurve, very distinctive shape. Still gonna be pretty useful though, I gotta say. Three and a quarter inches long, M390 steel, two-tone satin finish. Looks really good and it's gonna perform quite nicely, I think. The handles, you've got inlays on both sides. Two different versions of carbon fiber are available. They're both the same price. This is the uh, Wave carbon fiber, uh, and it's more of a layered rather than a woven carbon fiber. Feels really smooth and really nice in the hand. The whole knife feels nice in the hand, actually, and that's because they've contoured each side or, or radius the whole side. These aren't flat slabs. You've got something there for your hands to actually wrap around rather than just kind of Gorilla Grip onto. But even when you do put it in a heavy grip, it feels really nice. It's a good size too. It's not too big, uh, like some of these high-end uh, flipper uh, pocket flippers tend to get. But it's not a mini version either. It's kind of somewhere in between. Uh, but I think it's just about the perfect size for this knife. All right, let's keep with the uh, the high-end EDC theme. We've got something controversial here. I can just tell already. Uh, it's a new utility knife from Custom Knife Factory. This is called the Kanza or the Kanza just under 200 bucks for this thing, which is a lot, I got to admit. But as far as these retractable or retractable, retractable utility knives go, it's probably one of the nicer ones I've felt. The handles are titanium, two piece in design. And like that Riot, they've, uh, they're have they not just flat slabs. They are contoured over so that, I hate to say it, it does feel actually kind of comfortable, which is pretty cool. These do take just your standard utility blade. You've got a couple of different lengths. You can have just the tip sticking out or pull it out a little farther for your, uh, you know, your more heavier duty cuts that you're gonna need to use. Flip it around for a fresh edge or just replace it. These things can be a little nice because they, they definitely don't scream pocket knife. Uh, so if you happen to work uh, in maybe certain office environments where pocket knives might be frowned on, this might be a good option because it definitely, it, it's, you know, even though it's fancy, it's a tool straight up and it only weighs about uh, 1.38 ounces. That's pretty 
exact for me to say it weighs about something, um, but real easy to slip into your pocket uh, or into your bag, whatever you want. Uh, and you're just gonna have a really nice little tool. All right, next up, I've actually got a new pen or a actual pen flashlight combo from Olight. This is called the O-Pen 2. Now I've seen some pen and tool or uh, pen and flashlight combos before. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, they may come across a little gimmicky, but being that this is made by Olight, definitely not a gimmick. You know, their stuff is fantastic. I carry an Olight every day. Their machining is really good and they really think out their designs very well. So they didn't uh, just create this for the sake of it. They actually put some good thought into this O-Pen. Now the barrel actually, uh, it's kind of two different sections. You've got the pen section down here with a nice bolt action and it has a, a small roller ball refill in there. I'm not sure the exact uh, size at the moment, but the action's really good. It feels good in the hand. It's nice and balanced. You've got a little bit of a twist milling on the barrel right there to give you a little bit, a little bit of grip to that section. And then on the back, you have the flashlight section. It's actuated from the top and it's a side facing LED. Uh, max lumens on these are 120, uh, but it has three levels and it has a momentary on if you just hold the, or hold the button down, click the button down and you get, uh, I think it's the low, but then hold it down again. You can cycle through the modes or you can double click to get the high mode uh, right off the bat. What's nice about this too, is it's, uh, like I said, it's a two piece design. You can unscrew this here and have the two pieces separate, which I really like. Um, it actually works to the benefit of this pen format because of the way that pocket clip works. You can actually clip this to your collar or maybe a, a, you know, a breast pocket or something like that and have the light give you some kind of area illumination if you're working on something in the dark. Um, so that's what I mean. That's one of those non gimmicky things. They really thought out how you would uh, use this thing and how it might work differently than just a standard flashlight. And then right here on the bottom, there's a USB C port where you can recharge it. They are pretty cool, I must say, and they come in decently priced too. Um, 50 bucks. Uh, so yeah, not bad for a premium pen and flashlight all in one price. All right, next up, I've got a bunch of Civivi actually. We might as well call this Civivi week. Um, it's kind of funny because We Knife is the parent company of Civivi, so Civivi Week, whatever. Uh, first up though, I have got the Odium, which is a Ferrum Forge collaboration. Uh, and we've had this for a little bit, but our first batch came and went so fast because you guys have loved this, but we've got more in now. Few different colors. Uh, they come in or they start at just over 50 bucks right now. 2.6 inch blade or uh, 2.65 D2 and you know, if you know anything about Ferrum Forge, you can definitely tell this is one of their designs right off the bat. But yeah, D2 blade steel, nice little length under three inches. So you can take it just about anywhere. You can open it with the thumb cut out here. Let's see. Now, you know, I suck at the middle finger flick. You can, I kind of have to open it a little bit of the way so then I can flick it the rest of the way. But you could thumb open it or you could flip or open it because of course ball bearings in the pivot, just like every other, well, just like most other Civivi knives out there. The handle itself for me is about a three finger grip, but you do have that choil there at the front. It's pretty decently sized. Even for my larger fingers, I think it works pretty well for me. G10 does have a nice little bit of contour to it. And of course you've got that pocket clip there, uh, folded over, but not quite deep carry. And that is reversible to either side of the knife. Liner lock and those liners have been skeletonized to remove some weight. Even so this is about a two and a half inch knife or a two and a half ounce knife. So it's not quite ultra light given its size, but it's certainly not going to weigh you down. Steel's got a nice stonewashed finish, and I really like the shape for a, a small drop point for EDC. It's just, I like drop points. What can I say? It's going to be very versatile. The edges are all chamfered, so they're going to be comfortable when you're choking up. Got a nice usable tip. You can even reach right out there with your index finger if you need to. All right, next up, we've got another new design from Civivi. This is called the Ortis. Uh, these come in uh, pr uh, cheaper than a lot of uh, Civivi knives start at. These start at just 40 bucks, whereas a lot of theirs start right about the $50 mark. Specs are still uh, most of the Civivi's greatest hits. Uh, skeletonized liners, liner lock, ball bearings in the pivot, different colors of G10 to choose from, and a deep carry pocket clip in this case, which is reversible. And they give you a nice little hidden lanyard point on this one too. Now where they've differed a little bit on this design is on the blade steel itself rather than D2. 
we get 9CR14 MOV, which is sort of in the, uh, the 9CR family is sort of in the 440C range of performance. Really good option there. A um, little bit of a step up from some of the base model stainlesses that you could get in some budget models out there. Three and a quarter inch blade, like I said, 9CR. And we've got a black stone wash finish here, but there are satin finishes available as well. The choil on this one is a little bit smaller, which is kind of funny. Uh, when you hold it up next to that firm forge, that smaller knife has a, a bigger finger choil out there in front. So it's a little bit more cramped if you have larger fingers like myself, but I can still get up there if I'm kind of pulling back towards the flipper tab a little bit, rather than getting like a full grip out there in front of the tab. Hollow grind, nice clip point shape. And again, on this one, you've got a thumb hole opening as well as flipping. This is actually very similar to the recently released Dogma, which I've got a new version of here as well. Uh, but the blade itself is a little bit shorter and the handles are a little bit of a different shape as well. And I actually really like the handles on this. I think the Dogma's handles, uh, the shape looks better, but in terms of usability, on this Ortis, it's a very neutral shape so that you know you don't have finger grooves, you don't have any beak here at the end. So pretty much any hand size is gonna be able to use it pretty comfortably. Now on to that Dogma I just showed you. Uh, new version, they've actually gone uh, and done, uh, in addition to kind of spicing up the handles, they've changed the blade up just a little bit from the previous versions of the Dogma, which actually had a blade cutout similar to that Ortis. But this new one, rather than a blade cutout, you get dual fullers on each side of the knife. Now there's a few different versions of this new Dogma. This particular one's about 80 bucks and you've got a Damascus blade and they do use 9CR uh, steel as the base for their Damascus. So you're still getting some decent performance there. Now in addition to that good performance from that steel, they've also uh, done this a little bit differently from some of their previous ones in that they've uh, blackened it uh, more distinctly than some of the, uh, the other ones which have a more uh, shiny look to it. So you get more of the pattern popping out and it works really well against these handles. And we've got a black and white carbon fiber which has been milled. You still have that jigging pattern that the Dogma has had uh, so far, which I really like. And it's just got a different look with this particular, uh, this particular uh, material. Essentially, you've got a woven carbon fiber interspersed with layers of white. It looks kind of like G10, but I don't know for sure. It's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool design. And then again, liner lock, skeletonized liners, ball bearings, deep carry pocket clip that is reversible. You know the drill at this point. But with this one, with those fullers there, you can still use that as a thumb opener. And for this one, actually, I said I could do the middle finger flick. Uh, it took me two tries there, but you do have a little bit more to grab onto than just that thumb hole opener on the other version. So if that's your thing, this will uh, definitely give you that. All right, next up, we've got a, uh, another new variant. The rest of these are some new variants. We've got a new version of the McKenna. This is a front flipper by Elijah Isham. We've got, uh, or this one comes in just over 90 bucks, about 93 and some change. And a few upgrades over the standard models, which you know the greatest hits. I've uh, mentioned them a few times so far. Uh, first off, stonewashed brass for the handles. It looks really good. Uh, it's actually been patina just a little bit, not, not to black, um, but it's gotten a little bit darker and then they've stonewashed it. So it has an awesome antiqued look, really broken in right out of the box. The blade itself is still just under three inches and we've got an upgrade here. We're just now starting to see Civivi use 154CM uh, as one of their stainless options. So you've got even higher performance than the 440C equivalents on this really cool blade shape. Definitely ready for light duty EDC with that Warncliffe profile. And this is a front flipper as well. And you guys know I suck at front flippers, but this is one I've always been able to do pretty easily. So if you're kind of like me and you're, you may be a little clumsy at them sometimes, maybe give this one a try. All right, next up, we've got some new variants of both the Bull Mastiff and the Mastodon cleavers, which both were very recently released. Uh, and we've got basically carbon fiber and Damascus versions of each of those designs in both the large and small size for each. Uh, so they start uh, at just over 80 bucks and top out uh, at just over 95 for the full size Bull Mastiff, which I've got right here. Again, you've got that really aggressively darkened uh, Damascus blade that looks even cooler on this giant cleaver. I mean, there's just a ton of pattern going on there. The handles, I said they were carbon fiber, but it's actually a G10 with a carbon fiber top layer. So it's a, it is a laminate 
of those two materials, but you get the nice look of the carbon fiber there with kind of a polished, uh, polished finish there on the outside. Liner lock, ball bearings, deep carry pocket clip, and of course you've got the middle finger flick you could do with this real easily. You've got the thumb opening with those giant dual fullers, but the flipping action on this big blade is just super, super satisfying. I mean, we're almost four inches long in this case. Definitely an impression maker when it comes out of the pocket, even more so now with this really cool blade steel. All right, next up, uh, two new variants of the Brigand. Uh, and I wanted to show you both, um, even though they're very similar, because I, I like them. Now this top version here, we've got an antiqued copper handle with a uh, 154 cm blade. Again, this is just over eight or just under 80 bucks. And for about 85, you can get antiqued brass with that Damascus steel. Both of the handles look really good. They've essentially darkened these uh, more than that McKenna. They've essentially taken it to black. And then it looks like they've sanded it down from that finish, but not completely through it. So you get those streaks and lines uh, from the sanding process that they just look really good. Blade itself, uh, three and a half inches or just under. Uh, I really like the 154 CM here. You've got a stonewash finish on it. And I, I kind of like to call this a worn clip profile or a sheep's clip profile because they've kind of, it's kind of like those blade shapes, but they've clipped the front leading edge rather than just swooped it down. Uh, but definitely a great utility shape. Slightly larger finger choil, uh, about the same size as that Odium finger choil, so I can still get a pretty good grip up on there. And as with all of these Civivis, they do a really good job with the edge geometry, keeping the edge itself very thin and nice and sharp. That's definitely the case here. Um, it's just, you know, I'm always impressed with what they're able to do. High flat grind, nice swedge along the back. So you've got that uh, piece of, of drag removed so you can go through materials quite efficiently. And there's a lot of power in this blade shape. All right, enough with the Civivi for this week. Let's get to some outdoor stuff. Uh, and we have a new version of the Hella Kletten folder. This is uh, a bit expensive. This comes in just under 200 bucks. Uh, and it's seen some upgrades over the standard version, which I believe has a, a curly birch handle, which is pretty traditional for a Nordic style knife. Uh, but this has what they're calling uh, kebony wood. That is not ebony, it's ebony with a K in front, kebony, uh, which is essentially a, a fortified wood product. It's, they start out by using pine and I, I read the description on it and it's all fairly complex. I don't understand exactly what's happening, but it's uh, essentially a form of stabilizing the wood, but it's a, it feels like it goes a little bit beyond that. And then of course they dye it to get that brown, dark brown look too. Um, so it should be a nice durable material, certainly more, uh, should be more moisture resistant, I would think, than the curly birch handled versions and gives you just a different look as well. The blade itself is Hella's famous uh, triple laminated 12C27 that they use uh, all over their lineup. Short, just over two inches, uh, paired with a very fat handle. So for me, it's about a three finger grip. Uh, I wouldn't even say it's a three and a half finger grip. I don't really have anything to grab onto with my pinky unless I were to add a lanyard, which you certainly could. But because of the fatness of the handle, it is a pretty secure hold and it's just going to be a great little whittling knife, especially with that Scandi grind and the fact that that 12C27 can take a super fine edge very easily. It's going to be perfect for, uh, for wood carving sessions, whether you're uh, sitting on your back porch or whether you're heading out camping and you just need a small whittler, it'd be a pretty cool way to do it. Lock back on the back for security, folds right up. Now there's no sheath to carry this with, uh, but they do include some leather thong. You could make a lanyard like that. Um, but yeah, I just, I love Hella's stuff. Uh, I'm Norwegian by ancestry, so I love a made in Norway knife. Uh, they're pretty much the only guys out there doing it right now, so I always appreciate their stuff. All right, next up with uh, hunting season right around the corner, or even here, depending on where you are, um, we've got some new uh, replaceable blade outdoor edge knives. This is the Razorbone Folding Hunter. Comes in about 45 bucks and definitely a lot of reach here. I actually don't even have a, uh, a measurement on me here. Oh yeah, here we go. We're at about five inches on this particular blade, uh, but there's also some three and a half inch drop points and three and a half inch uh, gut hook blades as well, which are included in this handy belt sheath right here with a camouflage pattern on the outside. Pull that out. You can see we've got a few different uh, sizes. They're all sealed up at the moment, uh, but those will fit in this, uh, this little orange box and all of those can slide in right behind the tool itself on that sheath platform right there. 
Now there's a few different colors of this. There is also a, uh, you know, smaller versions of this out there as well. But I like that uh, you still have a lock back for some safety sake right there. And the way you change the blades, there's a push button right here that's uh, a little bit recessed in a raised section of the handle itself. So it's not as likely to be accidentally pushed. But you push that down, that pops right out just like that and you replace it the same way. Now the steel on these is a 420J2. Not high end at all, but it's not a, uh, a mystery steel, which I always appreciate that when they uh, let us know what they're, what the material itself actually is. And nice and thin, almost, almost scalpel thin as well. So it's gonna be very efficient cutting. And you don't have to throw these away. These are certainly, uh, it's certainly a, a serviceable steel that you could resharpen uh, once you're you know, done with the hunt. You can take them back, tune these up, and they're gonna be ready to go for next time too. The holder itself has some bevels uh, cut into it here on the side too, so it's not a big uh, fat chunky thing here at the spine that might catch. You still might get a little bit of catch on some things if you're, if you're working back here, but it's gonna be uh, a lot less uh, because of the way they've done that. Now, even though there is a sheath, they have included a, a right side tip up pocket clip as well, so you do have that option for carry. But the handle itself, it just feels pretty good, I gotta say. Uh, rubbery inserts in orange, like I said, some different colors. I think there's a red and a blue if you'd rather have one of those. And last but not least, we've got another one of K-Bar's new uh, kitchen tools. Uh, they're really doing a lot of these this year. This is the Zasaw pizza cutter. It comes in 19 bucks. Uh, and similar to the ice cream scoop, the, the uh, integral full tang ice cream scoop that we uh, looked at a few weeks back, you've got a uh, creamid handle that kind of apes the, uh, the classic K-Bar stacked leather shape if not the, uh, the look, because you know, it is plastic rather than, than leather. Um, but they've given it a couple pinch grips here right in front of it. So it actually, I, you know, I gotta say it, they actually thought through these tools. They're not just spitting these out, um, which is kind of refreshing, I must say. Now the blade itself, and yes, I can talk about the blade itself, is also not a mystery steel. This is 440A. Uh, again, not a super steel by any stretch of the imagination. But for something like a pizza cutter that you're going to be running it, uh, you might be banging into you know cutting boards or uh, or other things on your countertop. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Stone washed finish too, so scratches will blend in as you use it, don't you know? Uh, and it's removable. It looks like too. I haven't tried, but you've got a nut here on the front and a, a captive hex head there on the back, kind of similar to the uh, the way the Becker knives are held on or Becker knife handles are held on. Uh, except, you know, of course, much bigger. So theoretically, you could take this off and you could sharpen that wheel back up when it comes time to do that as well. And also, made in America, which is quite nice. All right, everyone, that is all I've got time to show you this week. Make sure to let me know your favorites down in the comments. Any feedback on these knives, make sure to let us know. Meantime, if you wanna get your hands on any of these, we will leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And while you're over there, make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program, because if you're gonna buy one of these cool knives anyway, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. And if you could, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really does help us out. See you guys next time.